For the past six months, I've been learning Japanese, and while I wish I could give you a rundown on the exact steps to success or wow you with my incredible native like Japanese, I've instead done some regrettable things like working at my job and going to school or hanging out with friends, and overall just ruining my 30 day road to true fluency. In all honesty, though, my journey hasn't been the most efficient, but I have definitely improved in these six months considering I couldn't really understand any Japanese in June at all. At this point, I can understand slice of life anime to a pretty comfortable extent, and my reading is solid enough to have me wanting to further engage in Japanese media, but that's enough being positive about my progress. The truth is that, like most skills, my progress is filled with tons and tons of mistakes and things I wish I could redo. I wanted to make this as a kind of progress report of my learning rather than me laying out the steps for learning Japanese, so I advise that you take most of what I say with a grain of salt. I'll also talk about some guides I recommend from some well-known people in the community. So first, let's go to the beginning of my journey, or what I like to call... I'm not gonna lie, I consider like the first three months of me learning Japanese to be largely wasted time with me not really knowing where to go. Basically all I did was look at r slash learn Japanese's wiki and go, wow, that's a lot, followed by pretty much nothing. I was definitely overwhelmed by all these different guides and roadmaps, but I was also really determined to start, so I ended up at least starting the kana first. I basically used Tofugu's guide and quiz and went on my merry way. But I also spent like two weeks on the kana for some reason, and you absolutely do not need to spend two weeks on the kana. Really, you can learn them in a few days or even like one or two days and just continue with your journey because you're going to see them literally all of the time in Japanese. Regardless, that's just kinda anyway, and losing out on a few weeks really isn't the end of the world. After this though, I got super overwhelmed and lost again. Pretty much every guide will start you with the kana, but where they go after that can vary quite a bit. I looked in between like three guides, didn't really follow any specific one, and somehow decided that individual kanji study would be my next step. I started studying kanji with one ikani, and to be honest, I completely regret it. <laughs> if you decide to do individual kanji study, I think paying for a service like one ikani just isn't a great method. At at least for me it wasn't. The reason I think that one ikani wasn't beneficial for me is that frankly there are more efficient and free options available. While a huge reason many people use one ikani is that it requires pretty much no setup, I promise that if you invest just a little bit of time into other methods you'll make a lot more rapid progress. I'm not really trying to send hate to one ikani by the way, I think there are better ways to study than one ikani, but if you use it you are still studying Japanese so it's not the worst thing out there. I ended up spending the remainder of June and all the way until September doing one ikani, making it to level 6 and in the end only having learned a little over 400 words from it. I made no progress in grammar at this point aside from skimming a little bit of Genki 1, and by September I could tell if I didn't change my method, my progress would stagnate. Or worse, I would lose control of my reviews and end up giving up. By then I had had enough though, and after meeting some fellow Japanese learners, it was about time I turned things around. Other than the kana knowledge I got from the very beginning, I basically just completely restarted things here. I researched a ton on language learning and acquisition, and I was met with a lot of the same advice I had heard in the beginning. It's just that this time I had a clearer mind and was able to filter through enough methods to realize that the majority of them boil down to immersion. When I first started looking into studying Japanese, immersion had always been this mythical thing that was always just out of reach for me. I constantly thought to myself that one day I would be able to immerse without realizing that I could just immerse. But yeah, you can just immerse, <laughs> even from day one. The main guide I turned to that kind of lit things up for me was Refold, but really, Refold's core methodology isn't really much different from a lot of other Japanese learning methods. Stuff like AJAT, MIA, and the Moe Way really do pretty much have the same core concept of learning new words and immersing, and that's what I considered to be the most important part and what's allowed me to make the progress I have since September. So the first thing I did was get a vocab deck, do 20 new words a day, and watch Japanese content. Content. The deck I used was Refold's JP1K, but after using it, I can confidently say that you can definitely just start with Core 2K instead and get pretty much the same benefits. JP1K conveniently aligned its vocabulary with the content I was mostly interested in watching at the time, that being Slice of Life anime, but you absolutely do not need to use JP1K. To be honest, I kind of recommend the Core 2K deck over it anyway since it's free, but after going through that deck, 
and reading some of Tay Kim's, I started getting more and more comfortable with the language. Some content was just starting to click, and I was slowly beginning to really enjoy some of the content I was watching instead of consuming it just because the novelty of learning Japanese was entertaining to me. I eventually continued down the path of sentence mining, and I've garnered about 400 words for mining while continuing to acquire some additional vocab from JPDB. JPDB is an interesting system that I really haven't put enough time into to have a concrete opinion on to be honest, but recently since my mining backlog has grown quite extensive, I've just moved back to Anki for my SRS. And that's pretty much where I'm at with Japanese so far. A whole lot of nothing, and then a little bit of something. I'm really happy with where I'm at right now, and I'm planning on pretty much just continuing as I'm going right now. I think overall though, I've learned a lot from the experience as a whole, even if it feels like I wasted a lot of time in the beginning. What I realized from this whole experience was that the number one thing in progressing a skill like Japanese is to stay engaged. There are tons of areas that you can be somewhat inefficient in, but if you pursue that skill in a way that keeps you as engaged as possible instead of following the standard textbook way all the time, you'll actually stick with the skill. And that brings me to my two next biggest takeaways. Improving Japanese comprehension really is all input. If you just keep consuming Japanese content and comprehending at least some of it, the process of figuring out what you don't know, filling in those small chunks of sentences you don't get, is really what drives progress forward. But for this to be effective, you really need to be okay with not getting things sometimes. I personally know some people who can get easily demotivated when things don't click right away, but if you're able to get over that, you'll realize that whatever you don't understand will eventually eventually come to you if you just keep immersing. So basically, just immerse with stuff you like and personally interests you. If I could go back in time and restart from scratch, I think I would push myself to just look into the Moe way or Refold earlier. A lot of guides follow the same core principle of focusing on immersion, but I personally found that the Moe way is nicer in terms of formatting and also being specifically focused on Japanese. I lurk in the Refold server too, and there's a lot of great resources around there. I actually got my current note type I use for mining from there. Regardless, they're both largely very similar anyway, and as long as you're learning Japanese some way and acquiring it through immersion, you should be solid. 